In 1982, the following tape aired during the children's programming block on. While the contents of the program itself were rather disturbing, no one could have imagined what it would do to some of the children who watched it. In light of this, naturally, viewer discretion is advised. Hello. Why so sad? Why so sad? As the tape begins, Andrew wakes up his friend Marcus and gleefully explains that the toy maker is in town. Wake up, Marcus. Uh-huh. Andrew! You interrupted my dream! I was dreaming about a man dressed in red with ice cream cones on his That's head. That's ridiculous, Marcus. You should be thinking about the perfect toy to ask the toy maker to make. If you're a fan of FNAF VHS, then you're probably already familiar with Baddington. Originally adapted from Squimpus McGrimpus's now classic series, Baddington's reimaginings of these tapes are widely regarded as the pinnacle of FNAF VHS content. Entries like Sound Response Check, Pirate Cove Pre-Show, and Non-Existent Video contain some of the scariest FNAF content ever produced. However, Baddington has another series. Get the girls and get as far as you can. Running. Andrew and Marcus head down the road to the toy store, hoping that the toy maker can produce the perfect toy for them. Well, hello, children! Me and my brother were wondering if you could make us the perfect toy. Well, you see, children, the secret to any good selling toy is to make them lifelike. You see, my toys can blink, but they can't see. My toys can walk, but they can't dance. No! No! My toys can eat, but they can't taste. My toys can talk, but they can't sing. Oh. You're scary. Believe me, children, I've tried to make the perfect toy, but I can't do it all on my own. As the toy maker laments that his creations just aren't lifelike enough, the children ask if there's anything they can do to assist him. Is there anything we could do to help? Why, yes there is. Well, what is it? There are three main ingredients that I need, so you'll have to get them for me. But we don't have any money. Don't you want to be happy? The first item he requests is needle and thread, which the boys are able to locate without too much trouble. Oh look, Marcus! A thread! However, when they look in the bag, they find... Fortunately, they also find a needle, so they grab that and return to the toy maker. We found the needle and thread! Wonderful! Now you must find fabric and paint! The children return with the paint, but the toy maker's next request is a little strange. Now I just need a few more things. Anything, Mr. Toy Maker. The next thing I need is your dog. What? What do you need him for? The toy needs to be happy, and it can't be happy without a friend. But Don't you want it to be happy? Don't be square, Andrew. Just let him have Bonzo. Yes, wonderful. Now come back later for the final step. Mr. Toymaker, we're back. You're just in time, children. Where's Bonzo? Never mind that, children. Now come closer. The last thing I need from you two is your voice. What do you mean? I need you both to sing a song. The toy is just on the other side of this door. Now, repeat after me. Warning, the following audio recording is an unauthorized release of private footage. For your safety, we ask that you please discard the tape immediately. If there is audio from the original footage, please cover your ears and close your eyes. As a last resort, we ask that you pray to God. <laughs> Splendid children! Do you have any idea what you've done for me, my children? 
You have done me well. Now come along, come along. It's just behind this door. We see epitaphs of several of the broadcast's grisly victims. Amy Wilson only stopped screaming when her spine came out. Richard Smith experienced a seizure while watching the broadcast, and Nathan Barnes was found with his head facing backwards. As the Toymaker's lullaby rang out, a piece of hell began to overflow into our world. Despite Anthony and Marcus's diligent preparation, the Toymaker seems disappointed with the results. Incredible, isn't it? However, the children, having seen the abomination the Toymaker has created, are horrified. What have you done to Bonzo? No matter how much I perfect the equation, there always seems to be something wrong. Well, we just wanted the perfect toy. So did I. What did you two do? What did you do? I have spent days perfecting this. Do you have any idea how many I've had to fool to try and try again, only to fail? You! Me? This is all your fault. You could have had the perfect toy. But you, you had to doubt me. <laughs> oh, my dear boy, you are going to pay for what you've done! I am not going to let anyone let me down, including you! You. An ominous figure emerges from the darkness. No! <laughs> no! Please! I just need more time! You just need to give me more time! Please! This isn't what all I had planned! Please, no! No! You just need to give me more time! No, 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 no! In the wake of this broadcast and the resulting deaths, people were outraged. The police investigated the bizarre circumstances under which the healthy children had died, and naturally, their prime suspect was the film's creator. The toy maker, Martin Greywinder. Martin Greywinder and his wife Gloria always wanted a child, but it seemed like it just wasn't meant to be. Martin was sterile. Maybe we can still adopt one. Yeah? No, I can't go through with that. I can't go through with taking care of somebody else's kid. I can't. It's... If it's not my blood, then I don't want it. Also, Martin is kind of a dick. To make matters worse, when he and his brother Arthur founded Harmony Entertainment, their intention was to sell toys, but none of Martin's inventions were very successful. It seemed like things couldn't get much worse for the man when suddenly his wife came to him with incredible news. Is this real? Are, are, are you? Are, are we? Am, am I going to be a... Oh. <laughs> a father! You're going to be a father! This just... Can't be true. The doctor said I would never be able to bear a child. They said your chances were little to none, and yet here we are! A child of your own blood. This is... well, this is a miracle! It's a miracle! It's, <laughs> this is fantastic! Now desperate to make ends meet for their growing family, Martin and his brother began producing animated children's cartoons. These proved rather successful, and Martin would go on to father a total of three children with Gloria. Their son Thomas, their eldest daughter Macy, and their youngest daughter Ava. While Arthur was content to produce animations, Martin still saw himself as a colossal failure. As he grew more and more desperate to create the perfect toy, he became fixated on one thing alone. The secret to any good selling toy is to make them lifelike. Sure enough, Martin would find a way to make his toys lifelike, but it would come at a terrible, terrible cost. That night, hell would unfold upon the Greywinder residence. The first toy that Martin creates is Fuzzy Buddy, a blue dog that can really talk. Speech Buddy has a voice of its own! <laughs> However, as you can probably guess, Fuzzy Buddy is no ordinary toy. Oh, 
Late one night, Martin is driving home when he tragically crashes his car into the family dog Bonzo, killing it. After putting one of his children to sleep, he spots a plush dog toy sitting on the dresser, and it gives him an idea. Bonzo, stand. Using the body of the family's dog, Martin has performed some sort of dark ritual to bring the toy to life, albeit as a horrific monstrosity. As he works, we can hear him angrily discuss his brother, Arthur, who seems to have upset him somehow. Later that night, Martin's brother Arthur would hear a strange sound coming from one of the rooms upstairs. Arthur is horrified to discover Bonzo, and he confronts his brother. I know what you did with the dog. What? The dog, Martin. They don't understand. You wouldn't get it from me, Martin. I told you to knock it off, but you did it anyway. Arthur, I, I think there's some sort of misunderstanding. Don't act stupid, Martin. The thing nearly killed me last night. Arthur knows that something isn't quite right with his brother. He knows that it was him who created that bizarre cartoon that left three people dead. He knows about Martin's history with domestic abuse, and he's had enough. Fearful of his brother's growing insanity, Arthur insists on separating Martin from his family, at least until he gets his shit together. I'm taking the kids. What? I'm worried I will watch over them until you sort yourself out. Her, the kids, and I are leaving tomorrow morning. I know. Eddie, what was going on between you two? It turns out that Gloria Greywinder hadn't been completely honest. Desperate for a child that Martin simply couldn't give her, she slept with his brother Arthur. Rationalizing that the two are brothers and that the children would, in a sense, share blood with Martin. If it's not my blood, then I don't want it. Arthur would go on to father all of the Greywinder children, with Martin seemingly none the wiser. At least, until now. Arthur denies it, and the two have an argument. Martin, stop like that. Oh, it's fine. I fixed that little problem. What do you mean, you? No. Oh, Mark. What have you done? First, the dog wouldn't listen to me, then my wife. I think the only thing I've learned through all of this is that I am not going to let anyone let me down, including you! Enraged, Martin shoots and kills his brother, performing the same sort of rituals he did on Bonzo to bring life to the ice cream man. Martin was already in a fragile mental state, but upon recognizing that his children are not his own, he loses all grip on reality. Dark forces grab a hold of him as he forgoes the final remnants of his sanity. Things are about to get really upsetting, so here's some puppies and kittens to cheer you up for a second. Martin puts his son Thomas to sleep. Sadly, the child would never wake up. Having sacrificed Arthur to bring life to the ice cream man, Martin deploys him upon Thomas and afterwards performs another horrific ritual, this time to bring life to the Henry doll, a singing dummy that can be pulled apart and put back together again. Can you see my eyes? Come on, use your peepers to find the peepers. Do you see it? Where is it hiding? He's hiding. Are you scared? We see another Harmony cartoon, this time of Henry singing. Would you want to sing with me? Great. 
twinkle, twinkle, little star. However, the video cuts, and when it returns, the puppet's eyes are missing, which it seems to acknowledge. Oh, hi. Sure is dark out. When Henry returns again, his speech is completely absent, replaced by an awful buzzing noise. After the jump scare, we see Henry has been dismembered, a red figure standing atop his head. In the next scene, we hear a monologue from what appears to be the spirit of Thomas, now trapped within the Henry toy. It turns out that the victims of Martin's dark practices find themselves in constant agony within their prisons, and we hear Thomas crying out for help. There is something inside of me, something that beats like it wants to get- with Arthur in the Ice Cream Man, and Thomas now in Henry, Martin continues to descend into madness. We see him put his daughter Macy to bed. When Gloria gets a call indicating that Thomas never made it to school that day, she goes to confront her husband. Martin! There you are! You told me you took Thomas to school, but here I am, getting a call from the school saying that Thomas wasn't there today. Are you listening to me? You know... Arthur demoted me. That broadcast incident really sent him over the edge. Honey, I understand how much that upsets you, but are you listening to me? What does it have to do with Thomas? Where is he? Where is our son? Our son? <laughs> How long did you think it would take for me to find out? Or did you think that I wouldn't find out at all? Martin, I don't know what you're talking about! Don't you lie to me! I already called Arthur to take us away from here because you have been out of control! And where are you gonna go? He's already gone. He left without you. He left without the kids. No. No, what did you do to him? Where's my son? Where is my boy? Where is he, Martin? You have 30 seconds to get the girls and get as far as you can. Start running. Oh, oh God. One. Oh, God. Please, no! Having revealed that he knows the children aren't his, Gloria rushes to Macy's room to retrieve her. The two go to leave, but when they do, they find that their path has been blocked. <laughs> Gloria hides Macy in a closet before turning to face her demonic husband. As this scene plays, we hear some strange audio in the background, but if we reverse it... Finally, everything has become clear. Wait, what? No it hasn't. I still don't know what the f*** is going on. Oh, okay, fair enough, I've got you. Martin has communed with a demon, perhaps the devil himself. Using the flesh of his victims, Martin performs a satanic ritual that brings his toys to life, though in horrific, demonic forms. First, he experimented with Bonzo, the family dog. Oh. When Martin's brother, Arthur, confronted him, Martin killed him and used him to bring life to the ice cream man. Upon learning that his children weren't really his, he did the same thing to his son, Thomas, this time transposing his soul into the Henry doll. My daddy loves me. 
While the victims are trapped in these respective characters, they're apparently helpless to resist the commands of Martin, following his orders and assisting him with his grisly crimes. Martin's daughter Macy experiences a similar fate. She's used to create Sophia, the singing marionette. Unfortunately, there was one more illegitimate child of Arthur Greywinder, Ava, the infant. Martin commands Bonzo to do the grisly deed, but when the dog thing enters the room and approaches the crib, he seems to hesitate. I don't know you that well, but I know you feed me treats. You pet me. You loved me, Ava. I'm so sorry, little one. Bonzo has been commanded to perform this horrific act, but he doesn't want to. The spirit of the family's loyal dog is resisting, fighting back against the demonic influence. Even amidst the devil's control, a part of Bonzo remembers that he's supposed to protect Ava, not hurt her. It is at this moment that the viewer is given an incredibly difficult choice. Huh. How are we gonna do this? Oh, I have an idea. If you don't want Bonzo to kill the innocent baby, like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you do want Bonzo to kill baby Ava, then... All right, come on, if enough of you guys like and subscribe right now, then we won't kill the baby. Well, if you're not gonna do it, then I guess you just want the baby to die, right? Fine, okay. Bonzo stands motionless before Ava's crib as Martin appears in clown form. Alas, in spite of Bonzo's reluctance, Martin ensures that the awful deed is done. What have you done to Bonzo? No matter how much I perfect the equation, there always seems to be something wrong. Well, we just wanted the perfect toy. So did I. What did you two do? What, what? what did you do? <gasps> when none of the Greywinders are seen around town for a while, police naturally become suspicious, especially considering the broadcast incident, as well as Martin's past history with domestic abuse. However, when the cops arrive, they find the severed limbs and empty skins of the Greywinders, though they clarify that the rest of them seem to have gone missing. This is the moment in the series that things really start to spiral out of control, and hell fully breaks loose. It seems that despite murdering his entire family, Martin was unable to fulfill his end of whatever pact he had made with this demon, and as a result, it takes his soul. Martin has turned the entire Greywinder family into toys, save for his wife Gloria, who persists only as a ghastly specter of his misdeeds. When the police arrive at the Greywinder residence, they find the house oddly quiet. One checks the upstairs while the other investigates the basement, but at first it seems like nobody is there. Mr. Greywinder, you are under arrest. Hello? Is anyone in here? The spirits of baby Ava and Bonzo seem to merge in this very abstract, surreal scene. The police officer encounters a new toy, this one an amalgamation of the tragedy mask that represents Ava and Bonzo. It turns out that the two joining together wasn't just metaphorical or figurative, they've literally become a single entity. Jeremy? No! 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 Jameson! Jameson! I'm coming, baby! I'm coming, where are you? Freeze! Stop right there and put your hands in the air! I said freeze! No! 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 A young boy rests at home on Christmas Eve. Having asked for the new Henry doll, he excitedly decides to stay awake and wait for Santa. Sure enough, later that night, he hears a crash on the roof. He's here. I heard him on the roof. I can't believe it. The child goes to snap a photo, but the creature turns and it becomes clear that it isn't Santa. It's Patrick from SpongeBob. Is this the Krusty Krab? 
No, this is Patrick. Patrick chases the child through the hallway and into his bedroom closet, and just before it spots him, we see the silhouette of a Henry doll run inside with him. I made a new friend today. He's really big and pink. He's a little scary, but also really shy. I'm going to take a picture of him to show mommy and daddy when they get back. The child goes to snap a photo of Patrick when... In Reliving Memories, we see that somehow, Arthur Greywinder has returned from the dead. Having apparently broken free of his brother's dark control while possessing the ice cream man, Arthur received plastic surgery in order to appear more like his old self. He reveals the opening of the Harmony Arcadia, a massive mall-like complex featuring a state-of-the-art security system. The world can be a dangerous place, and it can be hard to ensure the safety of our children. Not every guard dog is fit to guard. And the same can be said about you as a parent. That's why we put our trust in the hands of the Henry Security Puppet here at the Harmony Arcadia. After all, we humans aren't bulletproof, but with the state-of-the-art Kevlar-infused resin casted body shell, the Henry Security Puppet can stand against any firearm. As for long-range problems, Henry is equipped with extendable spring-like limbs. They can stretch up to 50 feet away. These high-tech puppets also come with a built-in criminal database, and with their concealed optical cameras, they'll be able to spot any potential threats before they enter the building. We've divided order, ensuring that no child breaks the rules. The next category is Trooper Henry. Trooper Henry is responsible for monitoring incriminating behavior from adults, making sure that all adults respect the rules. I am no longer the only one to make it back home. Please, welcome back our brave miracles, the eight missing individuals that were taken from us those seven years ago. Home at last. You have no idea how hungry it makes me to see these beautiful people back in the arms of their brave families who came here today to retain what was stolen from them. We hope to see you here at Harmony Arcadia real soon. Hello. You're scary.